Imagine that you wake up one morning and for some reason you have this urge to dive into a new game, a new world, a new MMORPG. You create your character, eager to kill enemies, dungeon dive for loot and raid with a group of your best friends. But first, do you know what class you want to pick? What equipment do you want to use and which is best for your role? What skills do you want to upgrade? Did you choose 2% more damage or 2% more critical hit chance? Should you invest in the third branch of the skill tree or the 13th? Did you maximize your main hand, your offhand, or your two-hand weapon skill? And do you have enough hit percentage to make it viable? And did you train in axes, swords, maces, stabs, great axes, great swords, great maces, or guns? Okay, seems simple enough. You can figure out player power, but wait. Did you also max out your necklace dust so you can empower your extra abilities that came with your armor set? Did you go and pet Mrs. Tibble's cat every day for a year so you can get the necessary damage buff she gives you? Did you go to the super secret cave to find the super rare ore so you can heat the super rare wood that you got from the super rare tree so you can craft a super basic item? How much money will I give you for potions and does Mrs. Tibbles love you yet or do you need to buy her a gift? Alright, this is a little bit of an exaggeration, but it illustrates a point. Depending on what MMOs you enjoy, everything I just said could be a normal Sunday night for you. But for some people, this sad and accurate list of random things you need to do in an MMO just seems like a joke. MMORPGs are by nature extremely large and complex games. They aim to replicate an entire world of possibilities, but how much complexity is the right amount? Where do game designers have to draw the line? How much can you ask a player to learn before they turn off the game and go play something else. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a casual analysis, a series where we analyze and discuss gaming trends old and new. In this video we'll be discussing complexity in MMO games, why they are made that way, and why too much complexity could drive away potential new players. MMORPGs, or massively multiplayer online role-playing games, are by nature extremely large and complex games. The genre itself, having a base in role-playing games, aims to give a player an entire world to interact with. And if you haven't gone outside lately, our world is still very complex. So imagine trying to fit all of what you could do outside in the world inside a video game. Hell, try fitting what you do in a day inside a video game. That's called The Sims, and it's an entire series of games dedicated to giving a very basic replication of what people do in their life. But can you kill your enemies? Can you cook 300 different recipes, each with a different buff that affects how well you function for the day? Can you go fish for a specific species that your pet companion will either love or hate? No. Like all RPGs, you have a specific set of actions within the game that the developers wanted to give you. RPGs aim to provide a sense of immersion, to provide just enough detail in the game to make you feel like you can escape into it for long periods of time. Many RPGs take inspiration from Dungeons & Dragons, the father of modern RPGs. In D&D, I create my character exactly how I want to. It's all pen and paper. I can write an entire novel that explains the backstory and motivation for why my character takes two dumps on Fridays but none on Saturdays. The game is theater of the mind, so anything I can think of can be attributed to the game. There are rules, of course, on how certain things interact with others, but depending on who you're playing with, you can change those too. Video game RPGs are much less open-ended than that. Any game that was created for you has a finite set of rules. A couple great examples that come to mind are Red Dead Redemption 2 or Grand Theft Auto V. These games were made with a very specific goal, but were praised for their living open world and sense of immersion. In GTA V, I can steal a car, run over my neighbor, take her cash, and then drive away with little to no consequences. But can I take her dog? No, because a pet system wasn't programmed into the game. MMORPGs try to take immersion to a whole new level. Games like World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, and Elder Scrolls Online have hundreds if not thousands of different ways that you can interact with the world that they built. Sandbox MMORPGs like RuneScape, Albion Online, and EVE Online market their games with the tagline, come do whatever you want, whenever you want. But all of these games have limitations, because there's no conceivable way, with today's technology, that you could completely replicate everything a real world has to offer. But gamers love it. MMORPGs will try to put as much as they possibly can into a single game, and then launch expansions that bring new content, new worlds, and new ways to interact with them. So when you create a character in World of Warcraft that has 17 years worth of content built into it, 17 years worth of ways to interact with the game, how are you supposed to catch up? If you've been playing RuneScape, 
for 10 years where combat is click and wait, and you want to try Path of Exile for the first time? How are you going to feel having a skill tree with 1200 different nodes and choosing between 453 potential spells? This is where the difficulty of learning the game starts to act as a barrier to entry. There is always going to be a certain amount of difficulty a player will enjoy in a game. Games like Dark Souls or Ninja Gaiden are very polarizing because the difficulty will either draw you in or have you quit on the first boss. For some people, a higher difficulty is part of the experience. It's what makes the accomplishment so much sweeter. For others, it's a barrier to enjoyment. It keeps you from progressing in the game and enjoying everything else there is to enjoy. When players think of a game's difficulty, the first thing they usually think of is how hard is it to beat the boss? Or how hard is it to be competitive against other players? But a lot of that difficulty stems from the game's systems, and if it's easy or not to understand and master them. In Pokemon, the world is huge, with so many things to do and places to go. But even with so much to do, anyone can engage with the systems in the game. As the hero of the game, you walk around catching animals for the sole purpose of pitting them against each other in trial by combat. The strongest team wins fame and fortune. The gameplay loop, catch Pokemon, train them to be the best, and defeat gym leaders is very simple. The main system is a rock-paper-scissors type deal where one Pokemon type will be stronger against another. It's easy. Children have figured it out. Simple gameplay mechanics, simple gameplay loop. On the other hand, we have The Witcher 3. The world is massive, and you can explore just about anywhere. There are hundreds of quests and a great storyline, and the difficulty of beating enemies is not too difficult, but it's not easy. The Witcher is a masterpiece of a game, but it's less accessible to new players because of how many mechanics you need to learn. In The Witcher 3, you have a steel sword and a silver sword. The steel one works on humans, and the silver works on monsters. You can upgrade silver weapons with runes, and if you have three runes on a silver sword, it becomes a rune sword, which adds more damage and other modifiers to your weapon. You can't upgrade steel weapons this way. But you can also use oils on your weapons, which also provide a stat modifier to your weapon. You also have signs that provide small useful spells in combat and solving puzzles. There is Ard, a knockback spell, Igni, a fire spell, Quen, a shield spell, Irden, a trap spell, and Axie, a charm spell. Oh, and don't forget your Witcher Sense, which can be used to get clues during your quests. And there's so much more. This isn't a negative for everyone, but it is definitely a deterrent to new players who want to pick up the game and aren't ready to sit and learn for a couple hours. If you were to present Pokemon and The Witcher 3 as options to your friend or significant other who doesn't play video games often, which game do you think that they would stick with? The aesthetic of The Witcher may look cool, but your friend will quickly become overwhelmed and end up putting the game down. Fascinating story. Any chance you're nearing the end? If they played Pokemon, they would take 15 minutes to learn all of the mechanics and be able to enjoy the game as a whole. The difference being that the complexity of the systems would keep your friend away from games like The Witcher and push towards simpler ones like Pokemon. MMORPGs have a difficult time finding balance with complexity like this. The gameplay is usually super simple. Go quest, make money, defeat enemies, and get better gear. Where MMORPGs start to get more complex is with the mechanics of how you can go about completing that gameplay loop. MMORPGs are games that demand time. They are designed to be that way. You may have 80 hours of base gameplay with hundreds of more hours with multiple characters or social play or PvP content. Players who attempt to start a new MMO, even if they are coming from another game in the same genre, are going to be much more sensitive to complexity in the gameplay mechanics. As the complexity goes up, the investment required goes up, and that creates this barrier to entry. Let's say a new player picked up World of Warcraft today because he heard that the raids in the max level dungeons were incredibly well made and that the art department was filled with award-winning employees of a terrible company. Can you imagine all that they would have to learn in order to reach the max level dungeons or raids? The endgame is 90% of the gameplay loop now, with leveling and exploration being pushed to the side to make room for more complicated temporary player power systems. The gameplay loop got extremely elaborate in order to create new ways for veteran players to engage in the same long progression system over and over again. But in the latest expansion, Shadowlands, you were given 60 levels of super fast, nearly irrelevant gameplay, only 10 of which are new content. Then you are forced into this intricate web of mechanics that are so difficult to understand and complete that you are forced to look up guides to figure out any of it. If any of you watching are WoW veterans like myself, 
you would understand the frustration a new player would go through if they were to try anything that we were just forced to do for an entire expansion. The new player needs to be given a good understanding of how these things work, or their experience could be negatively altered simply because of a lack of knowledge. And this leads us into a final bit of our analysis. How do you help a new player navigate the complexity of the game so they can become followers or even experts on the subject? Okay, now, hear me out on this. I know some of you saw the section title and immediately got a little angry thinking of how long and boring tutorials can be, but I think we can all agree that some level of player education is necessary in any game. Dropping a player into the middle of a game without teaching them how to engage any of the content is a quick way to lose that player. If you took your non-gamer friend and shoved a controller in their hand and loaded up the latest save file of The Witcher 3, they would be completely unaware of what to do and how to do it. So you immediately tell them what to do, right? Oh, go ahead and press X to talk to that guy or go to the highlighted area on your map to fight the monsters that you need for a quest. Guess what you just did? You gave them a short tutorial. Tutorials don't need to be boring and time consuming or just walls and walls of text on your screen. All a tutorial needs to do is give the most basic explanation of the game's mechanics so that a player can interact with the world and learn more on their own. A good example of this is old school RuneScape. In Old School RuneScape, the tutorial runs a new player through the most basic of functions like click to move, make a fire, go fishing, cook that fish, and then eat to maintain your health while performing this very simple combat. All of it takes about 5 minutes or less, especially if you know what to expect. If you are a new player though, it could take about 15 minutes. But that is nothing compared to how much there is to do in the entire game. But if you need another example, let's take a look at World of Warcraft again. World of Warcraft has so many problems. But the one thing they did right was add a new optional tutorial zone. When creating a new character, you have the option to start on Exile Reach, which is the default for new players. Exile's Reach teaches a player how to fight, how to eat, how to cook, how to quest, how to gear, and how to dungeon dive, all within the first 10 levels and within the guise of a small self-contained storyline. It's the perfect introduction to the basics of World of Warcraft, and then you never have to do it again if you don't want to. MMORPGs spend a lot of time and resources developing their massive games, so it is not a huge surprise that they wouldn't create a worthwhile tutorial, but in my opinion, a good tutorial could make or break a game. But really it all comes down to new player education. Why would a new player, who has no knowledge of how great the endgame is, stick around long enough to experience it? And when they get there, how are they supposed to know what to do to get on the same level as everyone else? And the answer is not look it up. Obviously, if you looked up on Google or YouTube, there are bound to be guides already created for whatever game you are playing. But even looking up a guide and understanding it is much more than a lot of players would take the time to do. Making that a necessary part of the game is just begging for you to lose people to a much simpler, easier game to learn. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the video or found it interesting, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. I appreciate your support, and I can't wait to see what we talk about next.